We now have our first super typhoon of 2021 in the western Pacific here on the evening of the 17th of April 2021. This is Typhoon Sergei, also known as Basing in the Philippines. Winds now sustained, according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, of 240 gusting to 297 kilometers per hour. According to the JMA, pressure is now down to 925 hectopascals. If you take a look at satellite imagery of this storm system, this is just a textbook case of a potent storm. We're talking about Category 5 type super typhoon out here. If you are in meteorology school and you you see a picture of a hurricane or a typhoon this is the type of thing you see here that annular setup you have that outflow off towards north towards the south plenty of convection i mean we just take a look a little bit closer look at this visible satellite imagery you can see the well-defined eye out here around that center of a circulation all that convection really bubbling up in it and that's where we do have those winds nearing 300 kilometers per hour around that center eye so a uh, very dangerous storm the good news right now this is is over the Philippine Sea, so it's not impacting anybody directly. But as we go ahead over the course of the next few days, it is really going to be nearing the coastline here. So I'm going to get to that in a second. A few of you have asked me this question. No, right after I posted that it was a super typhoon, they said, how accurate is this? Now, in the Western Pacific, we don't have the luxury like in the Atlantic to have hurricane hunters. We use something we call the Dvorak analysis. Now this is just a nice little chart from the University of Wisconsin. Dvorak analysis is basically satellite interpretation. This is really summing it up very quickly. Satellite interpretation based on past storm systems and their intensities. We have a raw number of 8.0 which ultimately estimated about 7.8 and matches up to about winds of 164 knots. This just takes kind of your highest cloud tops, the lowest cloud tops, how the storm looks like, all that stuff averaged together, and we get kind of an idea of where the intensity of the storm is. I'm not going to argue with it being a super typhoon right now. You just look at visible satellite imagery, it looks dangerous. All right, so where is it going? Well, this is another thing. It's moving in between these two areas of high pressure. Basically, the ridge is starting to break down just a bit here, allowing our storm to pull north. Remember, these storms are kind of like water. They want to flow downhill to lower elevations. You got a high, you got a high, it's going to want to go towards the low here. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. It should start to track towards north, running along the eastern edge of this high pressure ridge. But the thing is, it's a lot of question about how strong is this ridge. I think it's going to butt up right up against it, which brings it pretty close to the east coast of the Philippines here. So the track from Bagasa does turn it towards the north, but still keep an eye on that western side of the cone of air. I've been saying this for about a week now. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I still am worried that this is going to get a little bit closer here. Close enough, especially with the overall size of the storm system to cause problems. And, and thank goodness, Bagasa. I know at the last maybe 10 years ago, I would give Pegasa a lot of shade, but lately they got new people in there. They have been doing a fantastic job and you can see those signal force warnings in place already well ahead of the storm system in Northeastern and now through Southeastern Luzon, Samar, Late Day, all under those signal force warning one. And I would expect them to get up to at least a two or a three as we look ahead. So here's a look at the main points though. Uh, with this track is still uncertain, so it could be closer. So don't pay complete attention to that center line. You want to look at the overall scope of the storm. Large waves along the coast for sure, along with heavy rainfall. I mean, even off towards the Sierra Madre Mountains in uh, eastern Luzon, you're also going to be looking at the threat of heavy rainfall and flooding. The Cagayan Valley, I'm sure very uh, keen at seeing what's going to be happening here because of the fact our last storm system, remember Goni uh, came through, caused all sorts of problems. And uh, I don't see anything like that, but if this does get close enough, it's for sure is gonna bring some heavy rains. This is the latest track from the ECMWF. Good news, that model is keeping our storm just enough offshore where it, it, we're not looking at the inner core of typhoon winds as the last few models were showing, or last few model runs were showing, but it, it is still showing it close enough to cause problems. By the way, this is the most westwardly track of all the models. That's why I'm showing it to you. I'm not trying to fear monger. I just want to show you one of the possibilities. Most of the other guidance does keep it further away, but close enough where you see those inner core of those winds. That's about that, that red shaded area. You know, we're talking about tropical storm to near typhoon strength when we're talking about that. That's why I say from Samar, southeastern Luzon, all the way up even along 
Sierra Madre Mountains, prepare for at least tropical storm or typhoon conditions. I'm talking about winds, you know, gusting up and over 50 to 80 kilometers per hour. On the low side, I think in Samara, we're going to be looking at uh, wind gust up and over well over 100 kilometers per hour. There's a look at the ECMWF and the GFS Ensemble. Uh, key thing with the ECMWF, look at the bulk of the ensemble it has shifted east yesterday. Most of this was over land. There is still a few of the members that do bring it on shore. Thus, you still have some uncertainty here. But if you match it up with a lot of the other guidance, it does pull it away. And with that ridge starting to break down towards north, I'm trying to remain optimistic here, but I don't want you to completely ignore this storm if you are out here in central and northern Luzon, because uh, it, it, there is still some uncertainty here with that extended forecast. Also, if you're back towards Okinawa, um, yeah, storm's gonna pull north, hit the jet stream, stay south of you, still could create some large waves out there along the southern Japanese islands over through Taiwan, but really I'm not too terribly concerned uh, for you back towards the north. I know a few people there have had questions. Hey, thank you very much for everybody on Patreon has been helping me out. Uh, Ron, Adam, Jim, David, thank you very much there, as well as those typhoons, Mike, David, Carrie. I mean, I can't thank you guys enough. If anybody wants to really help make these videos better, uh, check out the link down below. Two dollars, just, you know, it helps. It helps. Because the thing is, I'm trying to get these better graphics uh, from Metro Weather, which um, it actually incorporates Pegasus data, which is the only TV weather graphic that does do that. Plus, uh, it has GMA data from Japan, you know, the World Meteorological Organization updates, and uh, any donation does help, but I get it, we're talking about a super typhoon, and a lot of people watching this update may not have money to give because you are worried about uh, repairs from a super typhoon, so I get it. If you don't have it, don't get it. I'm, not, I'm never going to pressure anybody or anything like that. But if you do and you want to help make these updates better, uh, please send, uh, check out that link. And uh, yeah, however you feel with it. Uh, if not, you know, subscribe. That's free and it does help me out or share out this video. The key thing is warning, letting people know uh, where this storm system is headed so they can stay safe and uh, prepare properly. Pegasa, by the way, they've been doing great. They have been making video updates kind of like mine. Uh, they do Facebook Lives. So check out their Facebook page because they do have some uh, really great forecasters in there talking about the storm and kind of their analysis similar to mine. They, they, the last one, they really stressed that uncertainty in the extended forecast. They showed the different models and all that. So, you know, they, they are doing a good job, especially for people who, um, unfortunately, I don't speak Tagalog. I, and also I cover all over the Western Pacific. I speak a bit of Japanese, so I could do one in, update in Japanese, but you know what? It ain't gonna help anybody. So that's why I always talk in English but Pegasus does have the, those updates in Tagalog as well. So, you know. All right. Anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe out there.